repeat of a workshop that we did on October 6th. So I'm doing kind of the same thing over. And I, I think most of you are, we're not on the 6th. If you are were there on the 6th and you just wanted to do it again, it's just like watching a video over again. That's totally fine. But we're going to use the same materials and go through the same demonstrations. This is going to be kind of a me talking at you just because we have a short amount of time. So there's not really time for you to like go over and do it because by the time you get something going, you would have missed like the next few things. I am going to put the slides in the chat so that you have them with all the links to all the things so that you could replicate this. And um, people are also available to come and help you at your site. People on my team, um, the water team, are doing some trainings at sites, or if you wanted us to work with some paraprofessionals or a department or, uh, you know, something so that you can review some of these things because um, there's some pretty cool stuff that you can do. So with that said, um, I'm going to ask, so I have Karen Kelly is here um, from my team and she's going to be monitoring the chat. And I think Mary and Tom are here too, but Karen's going to be interrupting me if there's something that comes up and if someone really wants to, we're a small enough group that if someone wants to unmute and say something, feel free to, you know, I'd rather have your questions right when you have them. Or if you want to, I see some of you just grab some paper and jot down something and we can have a little pause time where you say, can you go do that again? So sometimes I, I go fast. And so if I go too fast, I'd rather go back and do it again for you. This is the first slide. And I'm just going to kind of leave it like this. I'm not going to make it big so that I can kind of see. Um, so this is, we're, it's December 1st. Okay, that just freaked me out for a second because I don't think I said that out loud today. And this is a getting started with the toolbar. So um, I kind of feel like every time I get started with the toolbar, I learn something new. So it's okay. We just did a RAS Plus workshop with some of our special ed teachers on Tuesday. And every time I go in there, I learn something new also. So I think we have so many digital resources at our fingertips, but we kind of forget um, how powerful they can be. So we're going to focus mostly on what is it? Like, where does it live? How do I get it to work? And also, the how do I have things read out loud? And how can this tool help me with written output, my own and my students? So that's kind of just the focus for this. And we actually did two workshops after this one that I will very possibly repeat if people want that. We went a little deeper in the second one with some of the other tools on the toolbar. And then the third workshop we did recently was working with PDFs and OrbitNote, which is our PDF tool. And all of those were recorded and they're all available on the EdTech site. So we can make sure that we point you to that also. Um, We've had a few teams use those during um, collaboration time and watch them together and pause it and kind of play with it and talk about it. Um, and I've gotten some really good feedback about the content and how it was presented and the pacing. So um, feeling pretty good about the planning and the content, the sequence. So um, some of these slides at the front are actually from Corey. Corey's not here today. Corey's from Text Help, and she's kind of our our lean lean on woman um, from the company. And a lot of you have gone, come to trainings in the past or uh, with a woman named Nora. I can't say her last name, Nora T. And um, we have great support from this company. Uh, they are right there to help us. She was actually double booked today, so she couldn't come. But this is kind of the text. Text Help is a company that's been around for a long time and they create other products um, in addition to the ones that we purchase. So they're, um, it's really an accessibility um, learning differences. They actually have tools that are used in the workplace also. So they're not just an educational company. They're also doing similar accessibility and inclusive work um, in the workplace. So looking at universal design for learning, you know, how do we engage our learners? How do we represent things in different ways? How do we offer options um, for students to share what they know? So the UDL lens, if that's something that you've been following in your teacher practice. This one I'm not going to go into, but um, there's two tiny links there. You can barely see them. But when you get the slideshow, um, there is a document that Textile has put out about kind of how to identify barriers in the ELA classroom and then also in the math. So there's some research that they've done. So you'll be able to click on that link when I send you the slideshow 
and then you can get this PDF and live on your computer and you can kind of peruse it. So they've, they've been doing a lot of research in this area. So I just want, I was going to delete it, but I said that might be interesting to some of you. So you can come and find that. So again, kind of the universal learning for, for uh, whoops, sorry. Um, and differentiated learning, how they're different and how they're alike. And there's kind of a Venn diagram. Again, not going to go into that. I'm just going to click through these. This is the new kind of intervention focus for this year, the MTSS. But that tier one, tier two, tier three has been around for a while when we talk about meeting students' needs. And text help and using these extensions that we have really hits all three tiers. But that first tier, which is, you know, 80 to 90% of our students, it's making sure that we all know how to use those universal, you know, those accessibility features that are built into our Chromebooks and our laptops and our phones and those kinds of things that really meets the needs of the majority of our student. Then when you get more targeted and specific is when you get into that tier two and one, and they have some things in their tools that can also meet the needs of some of those students in addition to other equipment that we might be purchasing for a student with special needs. Again, another slide, I'm leaving this in here because Marianne LaFosse from the EL department thought this was great. There's a whole bunch of things in here about working with English language learners and how the um, text, helps tool, text help tools can help with that. And I'm gonna skip ahead here. So this is basically the first year that our district has bought Read and Write for Google Chrome for every single student in the district. We've been buying it for the last seven plus years for only students who had accommodations in their IEP. So we've been using it under the special ed umbrella, but this is the first year it's for everyone. So we have it on the domain. So that means that all students have access to it and all adults, any staff member working with the WCCUSD.net email. So paraprofessionals, classified, and all teachers. Um, the, the, the main toolbar, the meat of it is the Read and Write for Google Chrome toolbar. Then we also purchased, which we never have before, Orbit Note, which is the PDF tool. And then Screenshot Reader is the third one that's free. It's a little like a little superpower that you add on. So I'm going to show you all. Of, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Orbit Note today, but you'll see what those look like. And on your computer, this is what they look like. Right, so you have the little purple puzzle piece, which we've been talking about for a while. And then Orbit Note um, looks like this. It's kind of like two blue circles that are offset a little bit. You should have these in your Google extensions. And if you are not seeing them, they just might not be pinned. And I put this note on the bottom here because if you work at home, if you work not on your your WCC issued laptop, you might need to shop for these in the Google Chrome store and just add them. You'll have the access, but if you're not on your um, Lenovo ThinkPad that the district has issued you, or if you have a computer in your classroom, they might not have been pushed out to your personal device. So that's just something to be aware of. If they're not, if they're not there, it might just be that you're not on your district device. Um, there's no questions so far. We're good, Karen. We're good. Good. Okay. So this is what the toolbars look like. And you have one, you have a one toolbar, but it shows up in different settings. So the one that we're going to use the most is probably um, Google Docs. And then probably the second um, most used one is what using it on the web or the website. So that would be this middle one, but you'll see, just kind of just notice that there, there's similarities and there's differences. That's all you really need to, it might like, why isn't that tool here? Well, because different powers are available in different settings. So when I'm in slides, Google slides, these are the tools I have. When I'm working in a Google doc, I have something at the beginning, check it, grammar, spelling checker. You don't have that when you're on the web because you're, you're reading and you're, you're, inputting information into your brain. You're not like grammar checking a website. So different tools show up at different times. But what's really nice is that they, there's more alike than not alike. So the tools start to really become um, familiar and you say, oh, I want to use this now. And here it is. I, it looks the same. They don't change from setting to setting. So these are just some guiding questions just to kind of 
get you thinking like, what are all those little icons on the toolbar? What are you interested in knowing, you know, how to use? What are you interested in? What do you think would be helpful? Um, how would you see these being used in your classroom? How could you integrate the toolbar into what you're already doing, but your student, you know, into your, to enhance um, student learning, maybe get some students engaged that you're struggling to get engaged. And, you know, after this, what are you still curious about? Like, hmm, I wonder if it does this and things like that. So just be thinking about that as you're learning um, more about the toolbar. So I want to show you this quickly. This is a help document. And actually, I put this on the EdTech website also. Oh, you're not seeing it? Oh, did I? What? You're not seeing it? We're seeing everybody. Everybody's Where did square. it go? I think it stopped sharing. It looks like it stopped sharing. OK, so let me go. Let me go share again. Sorry about that. That's weird. I see Mary. Okay. I remember with Meet, sometimes it would drop us out of the Meet, but that was weird that it just kind of like dropped me out of sharing. So you, you were good now? Yes. Yeah. All right. So this is from the Text Help website. And what's nice about this is it has each tool and it kind of tells what it is, other than this is obviously pause and stop. And these are different colors. So they didn't, you know, do every single one. But if you click on it, Okay, what is going on? I'm having a little moment here. Tells prediction. you what it is. Before you type, tap prediction to help. This will give you a list of words as you type to help create your sentence. Hover and then over there's any even a to video. It to read aloud or tap it to a little video demonstrating how to use it. So it has it for each one. So I'm thinking that if you have uh, students using this, Maybe this is a resource you share with them. Maybe you, if you have a Google Classroom, this would be something you could post as a material to your classroom and just say, here's a, a read and write toolbar, you know, tutorial site. So you can just always go back to it. Anytime you're in Google Classroom, you can go to the classwork area and this will always be bookmarked there and available if you forget how to use one of these tools or you want to try something new or even just yourself. And then the other thing that the handout that we, this one worksheet that we really like, and we're going to do some of this right now, is let's get it read. So this is probably the tool that kind of the, I like to call them powers or tools that students use the most is having text read aloud to them. So it just kind of shows you the different icons you're going to see. So play, this is like an old Sony Walkman or an iPod, right? So you see this on the docs, webs, PDFs, play. Sometimes you see this hover speech. So it's a little like speech bubble on the web. It will, it will, you can hover and then click and then it will read text right there. When you're on a PDF, you see it kind of like this. This is like the click to speak. Um, Someone let him in. Okay, I guess. I'm and then screenshot reader, we talked about this is like a little tool that I'll demonstrate that um, reads inaccessible text. So it's a little mini scanner. It's pretty cool. And it works on anywhere that text maybe isn't be, being read by one of these other three tools. So with that said, we're going to go to do to do some reading. And I'm going to pull up a few different kinds of um, learning resources and just show you how the toolbar kind of interacts with them. And again, you guys are being quiet. So if you have questions or uh, I went over something there, like you'll have the slideshow. I'm going to give you the slideshow at the end and you can go back. But feel free to put something in the chat if you don't want to, um, you know, interrupt anything. And we will just pause and go back and do something again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work with some literature. So for this particular workshop, we worked with um, the third grade text, Winn-Dixie, which is a teacher college mentor text also. And this could be anything. This could be a ninth grade ELA novel or something like that. But I just kind of wanna show you some ways that you can work with text. Oh, no, it's fine. You're good. There's no sign in yet. There's gonna be a sign out. Um, 
So I'm going to, oh, we left those highlights from here earlier, Karen. That's fine. <laughs> so this is chapter one of a novel. And I copied this from a PDF. And I just want to show, so so when we're working with, with learning materials, Google Docs is really kind of my first choice. That's the first place if I want students to read something and I'm going to create that reading material, Google Docs is, is really the most accessible. And the reason why is that I can manipulate the text. So I just want to show you just right here, this is the first paragraph. And then I go into the second paragraph because it's a Google Doc. I can change the font size. I can change the, the type of font that might have different letter spacing if I have a student maybe who has dyslexia. I can double space between lines if a student needs that. So it's just that easy to do it just because it's digital text. You also have the ability to just, you know, with any, you can zoom in if you're, you know, teaching a lesson and you're projecting this on your projector and you just want it as big as possible. So this is just, if I go down here, this is just, you know, it's a straight up first chapter of the book. So the first thing is, is I can have it read aloud. Mary, did you have a question? I just have a quick question. I know you're saying that you Google Docs is kind of your first choice. Mm -hmm. And so I know that I've been running into some bad scans, some bad PDFs <clears throat> in Unique, and we've had this discussion. Uh, if I took that and I and I copied it and I and I put that into a Google Doc, would that could Yeah, could that's what I, I did with this. This was from a PDF that was clunky. So yeah. so so I could do that and then it kind of takes away all the background stuff. Right. Right. Okay. Focusing on the text. Yeah. Really Depending. Thanks. I mean, this isn't as if this was a book with pictures right. and other things, I would be definitely taking something away for the students. So it's not right. perfect. Right. 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 But on some things where it's just kind of laid out with some questions and it's like it jumps around and it's skippy if the, right. if the scan isn't good. So if I just right. kind of did this then I could put that into a doc and have the right. same idea. OK, cool. And Thank unformat you. it and make it what you want. So the first thing we talked about, so this is reading. I'm focusing on reading, and then there's going to be some little extra spices on this side. So I'm just, I'm my, my cursor is right here, and I'm just going to push play. My name is India Opal Guloni, and last summer my daddy, the... I'm going to pause. It's double highlighting. That means that the sentence that's being read out loud is yellow and blue is right with a word. This is this is kind of the the you know the highest level of text to speech. And so if you're looking for accessible text reader, this is what you're looking for, double highlighting. A lot of our curriculum resources in Clever only highlight. I was just showing a teacher, I think um I'm not sure if it was Britannica online or another book. And it was just highlighting the sentence that was being read aloud. Some of our e-textbooks don't highlight anything. And I am like, it's reading. And I'm like, I don't even know where you are on the page. So think about that. If you can't read, you would have, you know, you're not getting that like visual with the auditory. And then it's also there. So the, the more kind of connection to text, the better for our struggling readers. So that's just straight up, it's called, um, what do they call it here? It's different, I mean, this is text-to-speech is the technical term. They just say play, pause, stop, right? So that's your text reader, let's call it that. Now you're not gonna see any other over here hover speech or anything like that because I'm in a Google Doc. So some other things that you can do when you're just in text is you have a dictionary. So I can I can select the word summer and I can look up what what is summer 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 noun the season between spring and autumn which is you usually the hottest that we lay in you the sun in the summer the, um, the season between stop I'm done with that leave that up and then there's also a picture dictionary so let's say that you have a student who doesn't have a needs that kind of context you might have a low a cognitively delayed student where the pictures might really help you can have these just up on the page, I don't have a lot of border right now, but if I, if I was on a bigger screen and not presenting, there would be room. I can move. I could move that one over here. And then you also have this one word translation. So these are all things that could be happening. Think about your learners. Think about your struggling readers. So this is looking it up. I have the, it's set for Spanish. Estio. 
So then they would know very quickly what that word is in Spanish. If they speak a different language, there are translation tools in many different languages. So these are three little tools that can just kind of be hovering around. This is a lot for me personally, but if I needed it, then they could, you know, if this really helped, they could, they just could know how to kind of create the space on the page. In fact, if I wasn't zoomed to 150 and I was at 100, I have a lot more room on the side and those could just live on the side. Okay. So, and I know those three tools are on right now because they're all purple. Show so these turn better. purple when they're on. Any questions about that, Karen? I was to say, just show how you can go from one word to another word. Okay. So right now we're looking at summer. So I've got summer going on and then maybe I don't know what a manager is. So bam, all three of those are now changed to manager right? White. Now this isn't going to, the picture dictionary is not pulling from Google images and it's not going to have every single word. Some might be blank. There might not be an icon for it. And obviously if I do, uh, Opal might be interesting because it's like, I don't even know what that, that's just like a person, right? But it's not going to do proper names and nouns and cities and stuff like that. So it's no match found for this. So it's not, you know, it's not like it's going to pull an image for everything. But um, the, the, the dictionary for the words that are, you know, will come up and then it will, and then the, this will Sucio. do here. Terroso. As two, two different definitions for that. So I'm going to close all those. And then you see that there's no purple there. So we use the play, pause, and stop. We use the dictionary and we use the picture dictionary. And you see how it's saying what it is as I hover over. And we use the one word translation. There's been some misunderstanding about read and write toolbar. We've had a few people in these workshops who thinks, think it can translate a document. It doesn't, but Google Docs can be translated. So if you are working with uh, an ELL population, this is a Google Doc. I can come up to tools. Where is it, you guys? It's halfway Translate down. this halfway document. Down. Yeah. Yeah, halfway down. Okay, chapter one, what language do I want to translate it in? So I'm going to say that I want it in Spanish. And I can say translate. And it took that and translated that Google Doc into Spanish. So that, and it, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be a hundred percent correct, correct, but I've run some of these by Spanish speakers and it, Google translate is pretty darn good, especially in Spanish. And there were many other languages. So going back to the original document, the translation tool is not translate a document. It's a one word translation. There are voices in the read and write toolbar that will read in other languages, but it won't translate it into that language. It will read something in that language in a native text reader. So those have been kind of just some misconceptions. Of I, I had someone say, oh, I haven't used read and write because I haven't needed to translate anything. And I'm like, I don't even know. I, I would never use read and write to translate. I don't even know what you're talking about. So I just think that people think different things about what this toolbar is. So I'm going to come over here real quick and I want to play, just play this text again so you can hear. My name is India Opal Buloni and last summer my daddy. The so I have kind of created, a, I've chosen a voice and a speed that works for me personally. And that's something that you would work with your students on. So I'm going to come over here. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm just going to kind of ice skate right along the toolbar really lightly and come over to these three dots. And you see there the settings. And I'm gonna open that up. So each tool on the toolbar, most of them, not at each one, but most of the tools have its own little set of sub settings. And we're not gonna go into all of this, but I want you to look at speech. So you have a few things here. These are the voices. So I have chosen, I've gone through different ones, but if you have a student who really doesn't, you know, wants a male voice or a female voice, there's, there are choices that are English, U.S. 
if you had a student who maybe had a, you know, an English, British accent or Australia accent, you could change it because maybe that was helpful for them to read things read out loud. And there's other languages, but again, it's not going to translate into those languages. It's going to completely butcher my Win dixie chapter because it's going to be reading it with a Spanish or a Russian accent. You would use those for when your actual text is in that language. You have a speed control, so you can slow it down. Um, the default is continuous reading, which means it just continuously reads. If you have a student who needs that to be different, you would know and you'd be working on that. And this is more for certain students when they're typing. Some students, when we work, especially in the ESN classroom, sometimes we have each word read aloud as they're typing. Um, most students probably would not want that, but it's available. So you can speak e on each word or speak on each sentence. And then you have that translation tool here, which I have at Spanish, but those can go to different languages. And then if I make any change here, I'm not going to go through, but you can see there's lots of things here. While I'm here, I'll just show you one thing. If there's tools on the toolbar that you don't want a student to have, you can click it. So let's look at look at my toolbar and look at this little one that here has the recorder, the little Walkman audio maker. You could just say, you know what? I'm not using that right now. You just you just turn it off and it goes away. So you're not deleting it. You're just hiding it. And then you just bring it back. So I'm trying to think we were just working with some students the other day and there were just too many things. And so then, and the parents were using this at home. We said, just turn off like five of them. Just, just have the ones that they're using. And they were like, we can. And I was like, yeah. And so then it's just the text reader. It's just the, the few that, that those particular students that had pretty significant needs only had the tools showing that they were using, but maybe we train them on one that's cool. And then we add that, you know, after a few months, after they get going with, um, some of the other ones. So again, if you make any changes, you always want to save your changes or I'm just going to cancel because I didn't change anything. So I'm just going to pause there for a second. Are we good on that so far? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show this is this. I'm going to give you a sneak peek peek into workshop two. Um, these words are actually already highlighted and I can highlight one more. I could say, okay, I'm not really sure what a preacher is. You know, the produce section, I have no idea what that means. A grocery store, maybe that's new and, um, I'll, you know, I'll just, I'll just take summer. It doesn't matter what color I'm using, but I'm, I'm highlighting the words. It could be you're highlighting words that are new to you, words that have a certain sound in it, words that start with TH. I mean, it could be anything that you're, you, whatever you're focusing on in your classroom. And then you have these like super tools over here at the end of your toolbar. The This is my favorite, which is vocabulary list. So I have four words there. I'm going to click on vocabulary list. And the first thing it asks you is, is there a particular color? Because maybe you highlighted all the words that had a silent letter in blue and then all the words that were plural with yellow, green or, you know, maybe there was a purpose. I didn't have a purpose, so I'm just going to leave them all there. But you could just say I only want to collect certain colors or not. And then I say, yep, I want to collect those. You say, okay. So it's it's sucking out those four words that I highlighted. And it has thrown them into a brand new Google Doc vocabulary list. And now you own this. You can manipulate it. You can do whatever you want. Usually there's quite a few definitions. So sometimes like this one produce, I know I, I, this was not to show something. I know this was a produce. So I'm actually, it's not produce, it was produce, right? So I could come up here and get rid of some of these and make sure that that was the context of the word for that paragraph in Winn-Dixie. So it has the word, it has the meaning, it has the symbol, it has a note. So the quick, cool thing on this is this is a Google Doc. I could go to page setup. I could change this to um, landscape. And that gives me more room to stretch this out. And then this I could say, you know, using a sentence or something, or write this in your own words. I can change the font. I can do anything. I could just say, you know what? 
I'm working with I I'm working with some kids. They we don't we don't need pictures. I'm just going to delete that column, right? And I'm really focusing on the sentence and then maybe I want I could insert a column to um the right and then I can do something else in that column, right? Maybe I want to connect to text. Where did, where was this word used? The pa I want the page number and the paragraph and then I'm doing something else and how did you connect to this or something like that. So this is a Google Doc that then I can manipulate. Your students actually also have this tool on their toolbar, so they could be creating their own vocabulary lists. You can post it to classroom. You can give them each their own copy, and then it can go further and further and get more and more um, detailed with however you use it. It's now in your drive. It's just a Google Doc. It's called Vocabulary List Chapter One because of Win Dixie. I didn't even type that. It did it for me because of where it grabbed those words from. So that's like a super, super cool. Um, the other tool that is at the end here is this extraction tool. And I'm gonna clear, I'm gonna clear these, get rid of my, my vocabulary words. So the best use for this one is um, like for, for especially for our upper grades is like if you're doing research or if a student's doing something and they have to grab in quotations from the text. So, you know, I could just say, oh, yeah, I, I need this red face and arms. And who led the he kept shouting? Maybe that like that helps something. OK. Oh, yeah, that that's going to really be some good evidence for that. And then I might say, you know, he skidded the scent. I need, I want to have, whoops, sorry. Didn't mean to look that up um, right there. And maybe that's another supporting fact for whatever. I could do, I could do different colors, but these two are highlighted. <coughs> and then I could click on this collect highlights. I only did green, but it doesn't matter. I can just say, okay. And then the same thing, it sucks them out. And it pulls them into a new Google document. And it tells you it has the link back to where it got them. And then it has my name. So you can always go back to that Google Doc and, um, you know, as a reference, as a teacher, then I know where the highlights came from. I can, this is now just text. I can unhighlight it. I can actually close the toolbar. I can do anything I want. I can, you know, I can make this 18 you know, a different font. It's I, I own it now. There's not there's nothing connected back to that Win Dixie chapter. I've sucked it out. I've made a duplicate of it. And then I love to use this for um, research if you know you want three supporting facts to your argument or something like that. So they could bring them over and think, okay, you've got your facts. Now let's work on your paragraph, right? Like what's your intro? What's that? But you've got the facts. And if you needed to go back and cite something, you can do this from a website. Um, you know, then you could help them make the um, citation of the website. So that's a lot that that you're 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 getting into to workshop um, two. But I wanted to show that. And the only other thing I want to show you before I leave this doc is the oh, this little guy. What do they call it? Screen masking, or I call it overlay tool. So this is a tool that can allow a student to kind of help them focus on what they're reading. So right, this is pretty tall for this, but if I come down here to the settings, you have a choice of colors. So maybe I make that yellow. It's kind of weird to work with this, but once you figure it out, it's pretty straightforward. You have the opacity, so it can be lighter. That's the background. I'm gonna maybe make the background darker and I might make the reading light a little bit lighter. So I can see the yellow. And then the last one is the height of the reading light. So I might make it a little bit. And then I say save. So then now that's my reading light. So as I'm reading along, that might help me focus. Some people actually, if you, if you envision, just invert it, and maybe that yellow line is black, and they use it almost as a reading bar so that the text is on top. So right now they're reading, at first I didn't see... It's not great. It's not, I'm not showing it really well because I have the opacity kind of grayed out. But if that was white, it could help them stay focused, just like we might give a student an index card when they're reading a novel to, and, and they're sliding it along or a ruler. So that's a fun one. And it's on. And so then you just have to turn it's purple and then you just turn it off. So that's the screen masking. 
You've done translation. You've seen some highlighters. You saw the collect highlights. You saw the vocabulary list. You pretty much saw more than half of the tools. So that just, just using one Google Doc. So now I'm gonna go back over to my slides. So I'm gonna show you a couple of these on the web. So I'm gonna go to a website. So now I'm on the web. So this is National Geographic Kids. Here I am. I'm gonna click on my toolbar. Here it is. This is the one place that you can move the toolbar around, although I really prefer to have it up at the top because I'm just used to it. But when you're on the web is when you can move the toolbar. Look at all the things that you recognize. So those same highlighting tools, extraction and vocabulary list, you could do here out of this text. So the toolbar will take words, like if you did turtle and grass, it will suck them out and create a vocabulary list. Or you could select a fact and then you could extract it and bring it into another Google Doc for a research paper. You do see this hover in speech, um, hover speech now on the web. So if I turn that on, then wherever I click, an environment works well with a wide variety of species. It's going to read right where it is. It's going to just start there. You can always just say, I want to listen to this paragraph, and then you can A just green write. sea turtle glides through the Great Barrier Reef off the northeastern Same voice, same speed. Tools look the same, right? So it starts to become the, the students that use this a lot really know how to use it because it's, it's highlighting the same colors. So there's a lot more similarity than difference where... If you rely on, sometimes students have been using different text reading tools or, you know, they've been using like Epic books and then they go here for that. Everything looks different. What's nice about this is it's consistent. It always has the same same looking tools and their, their settings will stay personalized to what they prefer. Um, trying to think if there's anything else we haven't done. So if I turn that off, I can turn that off. The overlay tool, so I'm reading a website, can use that. That works. Um, same thing, I could take species, I could do the translation. Especie. So like we talked about, we could have a variety, I can look it up. I can have these, these, these things open also the same way we demoed in the Winn-Dixie. You could have these tools up while you're reading a website so that rather than getting stuck and needing to go somewhere else and look up that word, it's all right here on this one platform. So I'm on the web. So we saw it in a Google Doc and then we saw it on the web. So I don't think there's anything else I wanted to do. You were going to show them the uh, simplify. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's a little. That's a little sneak peek. Okay. This is a really cool tool. Um, so I'm on this website, and this isn't bad because it's for stu It's for kids, right? But if there was a website, you guys know you've probably assigned something to your students that might have some ads on the side or even just a lot going on, it's really busy. This is a really, this is when you know text help is a company that works um, with learning differences. They have this simplified tool. So this is a tool I would not see in a Google Doc. This is a web tool. So I'm on this, just kind of look at what the page looks like, right? Oh, let's see. On this glossary, that's gonna be interesting. And then it's got explore more, and then there's more at the bottom, all right? So you saw that. I'm gonna click on simplify. <laughs> So it's doing its little magic. Hopefully it won't crash and burn. Did we get this to simplify before? I don't know if I'm we did it with this doc or another doc. I think this one had did have a problem. I think this one might have had a problem. Let's give it a second. Um, trying to think if I have anything else I could do. I think maybe this, I think maybe National Geographic might have this um, made so that you can't do it. So let's see if I have. I usually just pull up like an SF gate article or something. Yeah. Um, just put this on another. Let's 
Okay. So if I let's just take an article, Warrior Star sells mansion. It's really important information. Everyone wants to know. So this is actually a better example because there's a lot going on here, right? You've got this sign me up and there's Twitter and there's things happening on the side and an ad. So I'm going to click, I'm going to open up my toolbar. Come on. And I'm going to simplify. And so here, what it's done is it's just the text, right? So it has the article right there. I guess this is just it. It's a small article. And you'll see the same tools. You can hover and speech. You can look up where, uh, hover and speak. You can look up, you can picture dictionary, play. Um, you can actually simplify a little bit. So if that's just too much text, it's, I forget she said, it doesn't change in the reading level. It's just, I don't know how it works, but it's some magic tool that just makes less text. So if that's too much, um, you can change the contrast. So if you have a, a student with visual impairments, so it can do all this stuff. You can make it really big. You can change the font. So right there, I've taken a website and I've made it really personal for a specific learner who might need those settings. And you can change the spacing. So all those things that I said I love about Google Docs, I now can do that with a web because I use that Simplify tool. If I was just on the website, you have no control. You are, other than Zooming, bigger and smaller. You can't change anything on a web page because it's the person who created that web page. And so if the text is really hard to read and it's really tight, you're kind of struggling with it, you could take it over to this tool and then um, go from here. I sometimes do this even to create handouts. So then I print it and then that's the that's what you're reading for the article. Like And then the, maybe they're highlighting on it or something like that too. It doesn't always have to be digital. So... Um, I don't know what I still have spinning here. That's still spinning. Okay. So I'm going to come back over here. We're good on that. And then the only other thing I wanted to show you, which is getting a little bit into um, Orbit Note, is this is a PDF. You would open that with Orbit Note, which is like its own little program. And again, you start to see the same tools. So this is a table. This is a PDF. So this is a like a locked document that usually is hard to read. And you you share this with your students. It comes with your teaching materials. But I could have things read out loud. Overall, I wrote a story of an important moment. It read like a story. I'm kind of at the whim of whoever created this PDF. So sometimes it's still a little jumpy and a, and a table is usually really hard because, you know, like sometimes a text reader reads like craziness on the page, but this is pretty good. And this is a teacher college fifth grade writing rubric. So this would be something that a teacher might actually want to share with a student, or you might have a rubric for your ninth grade research project and it comes from the curriculum. And so you could post that. And then for your non-readers, they could actually read what was expected of them for the project. So I opened that in Orbit Note, and then my tools became available. And so same here. This is red. I know it's on. You have again. You're going to see some of the same tools. This if this PDF was a bad scan and not readable, or I was on a website and there was something. This is that screenshot reader, and you get this little crosshatch, and you select the text that is. A bad is bad digital text, bad digital text, meaning it just it won't won't read. Wrote it, a beginning in which not only showed what was happening and where. So it scanned it in right there in that box and then it's reading it out loud. So that's another cool little tool. That's the screenshot reader that I said was like a little extra add on that you add. All right, I'm going to get out of there. And there's really no one. No one is no one's asking questions. Nope. Oh, okay. No okay. questions, but it's 445. So maybe I know. We'll so now I'm going to do the that. writing and that should be quick. All right. Okay. So then th that's all, that's all about reading. Plus I added some extra things. So now I want to talk a little bit about how the read and write toolbar can help with getting what students know out of their head and their body out to you. So how can they share what they know and, um, or what's assigned and so I'm going to show you first just some examples. This is just a kind of staying with the Winn-Dixie. 
These were just some literature circle um, questions that I pulled up with that chapter. But I, I grabbed a couple of the questions from my teacher resource and I created like a little reading log. So this is a possible assignment. Maybe this is something I'm going to put on my Google Classroom, you know, for a variety of reasons. So here's the question. And you can add comments if you don't know that in Google Docs just by inserting a comment under insert. So you can always put little comments on the side that they don't have to be uh, editing comments. They also can be, hey, remember we... We did this last week, you guys, you know, get it, make sure you have your notes out when you're doing this or something like that. It doesn't have to be comments were really first used for giving feedback, but they can also be giving further instructions. So this is a written comment and you, and it's linked to this describe a situation. And then this here is actually this tool on the toolbar at the very end is called, um, let me hover voice note, or some people say voice memo because we used to use an app. So you can add a voice memo. Is it on play? Remember that you should pull some examples from. So I just wrote something wind. about like to further explain like what compare means. Pull some examples. Students can also do voice notes to turn in their work. So if this was a handout with a few questions, so like maybe you gave this question. That's not a good one, but one of these, they could just you know, my answer. And then they could just highlight that and then add a voice note. They have 60 seconds. So that's the only thing. You can only have 60 seconds. So it can't be a di you know, a whole dialogue, but they could answer that question really quickly. They ha it has to be attached to something. So something, some word has to be selected. It, it won't just attach to air or white space. And they have 60 seconds. They can listen to it. And if they don't like it, they can re-record it and they don't have to actually insert it until they're happy with their answer. So that's one way to kind of a different, an alternative format for written text. Not everyone's gonna handwrite the answers or type it. You also hear you're in a doc, you have your speech, your talk and type or speech to text. So you can turn that on. And now I have my speech to text tool on and I can dictate my answer, period. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but if 95% of the words are correct, I have a lot more written than I would have typed or handwritten, period. Right? So then you train your students to listen back. And now I have my speech to text to land and I can Ooh, dictate. I didn't mean that. I now have my text to speech. I wanted to say, you know, on. So then they can come in and use their fingers or other tools to edit their text. Um, there's also word prediction, which I don't want to go into too much, but we have some students who use word prediction. So like I am... I am, I am, I am, I am. So it's hard because you have to know I'm trying to get stuck, but it's not stuck on this. So I'm, words are coming up as I'm getting, you have to get two to three letters in, mm -hmm. but for certain struggling spellers, this really works well because they, they know what it is and they can get the word started, but it's the end that they usually don't know. So some students just use this as a spell check, it's not doing it, but when you hover over it, this has been an issue with text help, it usually says it out loud. And so for some of those people who need the auditory reinforcement, they'll hover and listen to the word and then they can just click on it and it jumps into their program. So I've turned that on with, I call it the bald man with stars, but it's like this little prediction one over here that's purple right now. And then if I turn it off, it goes away. Where, where is the... Where is the speech to text the mic on the? I... It's the headset, like the headset next yeah. to the uh, overlay. Yeah, it's a headset right here. The, the text to speech is the same as Google Voice typing. It's the same tool, but what I like is that it's all in one toolbar, right? So they just kind of work on this toolbar. They don't have to go anywhere else to, to get these tools to work. Um, that was that. Uh, so I, you know, I, I'm big into sentence frames and examples. So here's like a math problem solving 
This is a, I've, I've copied a word problem into a Google Doc. I could just take that line, delete it, and say, in this problem, we were asked to figure out the area of a swimming pool, period. You know, and they could just take this Google Doc and make it their own by using the context of the word problem that they were. And so first I did this, you know, first I looked at the length and next I, and I hate these lines, but you kind of, when you're doing a, a paragraph frame, you kind of have to have something to show that something goes there before something else goes there. But um, there's lots of frames, paragraph frames out there. And I know people think it's cheating, but I've used them a lot in my writing instruction. And it's amazing. You can give 30 kids the same frame and you will get 30 different pieces of writing back. It very rarely ever looks the same because they make it their own with their own answers and the way that they process information and write. So that was just another example of how you could use the, you could be using speech to text here. You could be using, they could be looking up words that they don't know because you have your dictionary. You could use word prediction here. You could, if it's a different format, you could use that voice note tool. So those are different ways that they can share what they know. Sandy, you have a hand up. Okay. You want to unmute and just ask a question? I'm not sure who it was. Maybe she put it down. Let me look. Maybe you answered it. All right, keep going. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think anything else here that I had said. Oh, this is a document. I'm just going to keep this in here because I know we're, we're just about done. Um, this is kind of a cheat sheet for one thing that we do in assistive technology a lot with students, especially in the elementary when they have those small Acer Chromebooks, the high school students at least have a little bit bigger now is change the default font in Google Docs for specific students. So I just wanted you to know that if you open a Google Doc and you just start typing, I think the default is like Arial 12 or something like that. Like that's what Google sets. You can change that. You can change how big it is and you can change the spacing. So this is some directions here on how to change that and then also how to add more fonts. So when you're in Google Docs, you can add fonts. And then I have a link here to this LexEnd fonts. I'm not, there's no proof that, you know, there's a dyslexic font. There's also open dyslexic. There's a lot of controversy about that, but there are fonts that students prefer and they say it's easier. LexEnd plays with spacing and boldness. And there's many choices of Lexen. So that's a font that you could add to your font library when creating learning resources. You could also show a specific student how to change that font so that they can use it for their own writing. And then maybe they change it to something else before they turn it in because it's digital. It's really easy. They could type in 18, but turn it in 12 right before they, they submit it. So that's just like an accessibility um, thing that you could teach them. And then I'm also um, going to show you right now as we wrap up some graphic organizers. So that's it. I'm, I think I'm done. That was a lot. So I have an exit ticket for you. Does Asma have another question? Unmute and say your question. Um, hey, so where can I find the link to download the toolbar? You, well, if you're, what's your role? Are you a teacher? A uh, teacher aide. You don't have it? No. Do I have to download it? Are you using no, a if you don't personal? have it, you go to the Chrome Web Store and it will be, I'll, I'll I'll put the slides in here. They're they're Google Chrome extensions. So it would be mm -hmm. you go to the Chrome Web Store. And you and also have to make sure it's 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 not unpinned because I, be I've got a lot of people yeah. that it's it's not pinned. I can't show that right now because I'm only showing a tab and I don't think you can see. Can you see that? Um we Esme, also we'll work on we'll look at that tomorrow. Esme works with me. Okay, okay. Yeah, so look up in the upper right, right hand corner, the there's morning, this kind okay. of black also, puzzle piece-ish looking. Those are your extensions. And if they're not there, then you need to add it. If they're there and not pinned, then you can pin them and then they're easier to find. Sandy, right. also, we can't get the exit ticket. You have to copy and paste. No, it I know, I know. Back. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, and then, um, there's more hands up. So you guys could either unmute and question. ask your question or put it in the chat. Okay. First thing are I'm going to do. Evangeline, is... are you the two people in the same room? Well, she's with, she's with the and they're in the room together. together. That's why that they're having to mute and then you can unmute. 
Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. The first thing I'm, I'm just, I can't, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to, I posted the slides. So just open those in a tab. So you have them. And now here is the exit ticket. It's very short. I need everyone to do it because it's going to be proof that you were here. That's the second link. Make sure that works. And then Evangeline, did you have a quick question? If the other person in the room mutes, then you should be able to unmute. <laughs> Send them away somewhere. <laughs> so my my question is like I have the read and write for Google Chrome, but I only have Spanish under translator. And I know you said you you can translate in different languages. So that would be in your settings. So I can help oh, you with that. Okay. Yeah. It's, so you have to change that. Yeah. It's it's set to Spanish. So you can change it to other languages. Okay. Thank you. So I put those two links. Hopefully that works. Um, while you guys are doing things, I'm just going to kind of go down these. Um, I know I, I'm looking, I'm clicking on the wrong screen. Let me go back to my slides. So just know that there's a ton of stuff down here below. Right here are all the resources that we pulled from today. So the overview, it's also available in Spanish. The Let's Get It Red handout that I showed you quickly. There's also a really good one pager on how to introduce speech to text to students. Have them like think about it, have them maybe say it to you first before you jump into speech to text, right? Obviously dictation or speech to text might not work for students with um, certain speech impediments or, you know, language, but it works for a lot of students. Um, oh, so you can't get into it? Shoot. Um, can I change that to... I don't know how to change that to anybody. I thought we said they had to be um, a district employee. Yeah. Just, um, why don't you just email me and then I'll figure it out. I'll put yeah. her email I'm in not the chat. Sure. I th that's, I'm going to have to talk to Lori Roberts about that because I think it's I think it's for certificated and classified, but we'll figure that out. If you're a paraprofessional. Yeah, so there's my email. Just email me and say, this is my name. I attended the workshop and this is the site I work at. And your position. And your position. Yeah. So voice commands. This is a list of things that you can do with your voice. Insert bolted list. Question mark, right? So just play with it. I'm going to recommend play with the toolbar. Play with dictation, speech to text. If you don't use it, you should do it at least five or ten times before you ask a teacher, I mean a student, to, to be using it. You should kind of play with it. And kind of learn your cadence, your speed, how you pause and things like that. Because it's really good. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to understand how it works. Then there's a writing process handout. Here's the graphic organizers that I said. A whole bunch of graphic organizers that you can make copies of. And then below this, there's even more resources um, that I just kept in here from the last workshop. Close reading, some different things that... Um, you can think about how you could tie this in with your um, either working with students because you're a paraprofessional or you're a teacher and you're playing curriculum or maybe you're a resource and you're doing small group intervention.